Hi, and welcome to my Old School Blues Song Breakdown for the month of May. And this month we're going to break down the song Honest I Do by Jimmy Reed. And I'm a huge Jimmy Reed fan. I love the guitar work on, on these songs. Some people say it's too repetitive, too simple, but as a player and even as a, as a listener, I could play listen to this kind of stuff all night long. Jimmy Reed, just basic shuffles. I love this stuff. And it's a lot more complex than what, than what people think initially. And Honest I Do is a great tune if you're getting into the Jimmy Reed style to understand some of the, the basics and learn some cool licks. And the thing that stands out about the song are the treble licks that are played over the bass rhythm. The bass rhythm and the chords that you hear are very simple and I'm going to teach you those first and then we're going to spend some time on the treble stuff. And then I have tab written out for all this so you can go to the tab and listen to the tune verse by verse and I have every single part tabbed out. But in this lesson, I'm just going to kind of do an overview because I think the song is simple enough that you can really figure it out with what I'm going to show you. The basic rhythm of Honest I Do, it's in the key of A, and it's mostly one, one, it goes back and forth between the one and the five. There's one point in the song where it goes to the four, and then the five, and then the one. It's got a little different rhythm structure to it. So let me play just part of it and show you what's going on. So in the key of A, you hear this. between an A shuffle rhythm and a 5, which is E. And that shuffle rhythm, if you haven't learned this before, I've got my first finger in A, if I'm playing an A, on the second fret of the 4th string. And then I'm getting, I'm picking both the open 5, open 5th string, and that. And then I'm just taking my second finger, my ring finger rather, and going to the 4th fret, 5th fret, 4th fret, and then back to that. So the whole rhythm. Two, three, four, one, two, four. And I'm using my right hand palm and muffling the, the strings down by the bridge just a little bit. Then when he goes to the back to the 5, he's doing the same thing, just taking his first finger to the second fret of the 5th string. And, hitting the open 6th string. And when he gets there, to come back to the 1, he's doing this, this little run, walk-in run. So the whole thing, it's like this. Fourth string, first fret, second fret on the fourth string. And then end it. Probably do it like that. With one finger, first fret, and then right into that bass rhythm. So the whole thing. Then there's one point where he goes to the four. during the song and if I listen carefully he's just taking his first finger for the D over the four chord moving it to the second fret of the third string and now he's hitting the open four string which is a D that same pattern and then back to the one so the whole bass rhythm part that you hear in Honest I Do is basically that same pattern just moved between the one and the five and then one part of the song over the four now over the top of that, you've got a chord playing, almost like a swing chord pattern, where you hear this. And the one, to me, it sounds like he's playing a bar chord, a first position A bar chord, like this, with my, the bar at the fifth fret. Or he could be playing a first position A. 
either one sounds about the same and works. I think the bar chord shape is easier to control the sound of, but you have to listen to it carefully. He's playing one of those chords, and it sounds the upstrokes just make it easier to hit the hit the beat with that. And then when he goes to the five, to me it sounds like he's got an E played here, first position E. So when he's playing this, and sometimes it sounds like it's an E, and sometimes it sounds like the seventh is in there. So I'm taking my pinky and putting it on the third fret of the second string. Now when I play my E, I use two fingers, and that just frees these fingers up to do other things. I've got my first finger on the first fret of the third string, and then my second finger is getting both the fifth and the fourth strings of the second fret. And then if I want the seventh, I just drop the pinky in. And then when he goes over the, the four, the D for that short stretch, it sounds like he's playing a, a C seventh shape D. got that swing pattern going over the top of it. And that, you hear that on a lot of the Jimmy Reed songs. If you watch my video series on the guitars of Jimmy Reed, I go through all this and give you some specific examples from songs. Now the really cool part of Honest I Do is what's going on with the, the fills, the, the treble part. And I'm just going to show you some of these. It's like three or four ideas that he uses throughout the song. One is when he plays over the A chord, and sometimes you hear this little lick like this. And it sounds like he's mimicking the song. Don't you know that I love you? And he does that right at the start of the verse. And it doesn't sound like he resolves it in any fancy way. He just kind of lets it tail off Then he, before he throws in a fill. What that is, is just an A double stop. And I've got my first finger on the, that's where it'll wind up, is on the fifth fret of the second string, my second finger on the sixth fret, and I slide in from, uh, from below. And then he's got these single string patterns that he plays. That's one that I hear him play over the A. Something like that. But what I'm doing there is hammering on or kind of going back and forth between the 7th fret and the 5th fret of the 1st string. On the 1st string and then the same thing on the 2nd string. Then I'm going to get the 5th, 7th fret of the 4th string and then do a little trill type thingy with my 1st finger on the 5th fret of the 3rd string and then my 2nd finger coming down on the 6th fret. So the whole leg and that's over the one, so you hear this. I'm just playing the melody. I don't think he plays that guitar part. And then when he goes over the E, you hear one of my all-time favorite licks. It's so easy, but it's so cool. It does this. Does that type of thing. And what I'm doing... This is a, an E chord, so if I'm playing a power chord progression in A, I'm going So this is my 5, and what I'm doing is just putting my first finger over the top, bottom, top three strings, first, second, and third string, and the seventh fret, and then I'm dragging the pick over them, kind of a scraping, a raking motion, and then going to the ninth fret of the first string back to the seventh fret. And then coming back on the on the second string. Nine seven and then nine eight seven on the third string. Whoops. That's the lick we're looking for. He does that a couple times. And then he goes into this lick when he goes back to the one. And that's another really cool lick to play. And what it sounds to me like he's doing is he's doing... 
he's going from the fifth fret to the sixth fret on the third string to the second or fifth fret of the second string. And he's getting the fifth fret of the first string, but then he's kind of choking it off. And he's sliding from sounds like maybe the the eighth fret to the tenth fret on the second string. So it's like this. Whoops. And then he's coming back to the fifth fret of the second string. And then this typical Eddie Taylor, Jimmy Reed double stop. Flattening out my second or my ring finger on the second and third strings at the seventh fret. And then I'm gonna hammer on. I've got my first finger barring the second and third strings at the fifth fret. And then I'm gonna hammer on my second finger onto the sixth fret of the third string, but I'm also gonna hit the second string. It's a double stop, so like this. So that whole fill goes like this. And it goes back into the melody. And then those are the, the fills. Now there's a couple other licks that he throws in. There's one other one over the A. There's one point in the song where he does this. So he goes so from the 5th to the 6th fret on the 3rd string again, to the 5th fret of the 2nd string. Then he's going to slide on the 1st string from the 7th to the ninth, back up to the 5th or down to the 5th, to the 7th fret of the 1st string, to the 7th fret of the 2nd string, to the 5th fret of the 1st string. So like this. That's a typical, cool Eddie Taylor type lick over the A. And then there's a point in the tune where it goes to the four, where he plays the, the same lick we played up here on the A to start out with. Something like that over the, the D, when he goes to the D just for a minute. Because he goes here, then he goes right to the E back into that and he doesn't play any more fills over the four chord because the song doesn't go to the four chord so most of the fills you hear are over the a and then that same fill over and over again over the e but i tell you what i never get tired of playing that lick that is one of my all-time favorites that i've ever heard and it's fun to play what he's doing there really playing over that chord shape the e and all the fills in this tune like jazz guitar, follow the chord shape. So when he's playing over the A, he's just playing over that. When he goes to the E, he's playing over that chord shape. When he goes to the D, he's playing over that one. And once you learn that, a lot of the fills that you hear on the old blues recordings make sense. They're, they're not staying in the first position blues box the whole time. They couldn't. And they move with the song, with the chords, and play those fills over the chords. And that's, that's the logic behind a lot of the stuff that you hear on the, the old school records. So there you have a breakdown for Jimmy Reed's Honest I Do. Now, I did not go through it verse by verse, one by one, like I've done on some of the other songs. But what I've done is given you the tools that you can go and listen to that tune and break it down pretty easily. I think that's better for you, get you going and thinking and be kind of monotonous because in this tune he plays a lot of the same fills over and over again. Now he does use them in different places and there's one point where this lick he uses that a lot of times to wrap up a verse but there's other points in the song where he plays it as the main fill over the vocal verse. So when it starts a new verse you're in A he may play as a fill the song goes to the five and always on the five you're playing great fills in that tune 
And I think out of all the Jimmy Reed songs, this one has maybe the more complex fill ideas. And if you can learn those and understand why they're played where they are, then you can, you can tackle about any, any tune like that. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll be back again in June with another song breakdown. Haven't decided what we're doing yet, but it'll be something good, something old. And if you have any questions or comments about this lesson, if there's any part of the song that I, I neglected or missed and you want to figure it out, let me know and I can add on. I can add on to this video, add another one. I'll see you next month.